Our council tried to force us to sell our £200,000 home <clears throat> excuse me, to make room for asylum seekers. Elderly couples horror after strongly worded letter lands on their doorstep. Now, this is something that we're definitely going to see a lot more of, but the fact that there has been so much pushback against this, like, so soon is great. Because basically the only the only way to like get the government to actually kind of get on the back foot is as soon as they try and do even a wee tiny thing, explode. Explode, just go mental and go right after them for it. Because that's one of the very few things that makes the government go, okay, 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 like, and like and back off. Basically have a massive overreaction to everything. That's that's the only way to keep the government in check. Uh, an elderly couple who had just moved into their two hundred thousand pounds house were horrified to receive a letter from their council suggesting that the property could be subject to compulsory purchase and used to house asylum seekers. So basically, uh, see how everybody likes to go. The Great Replacement isn't real. Well, now they're actually trying to just steal houses from people. Uh, steal? They said they'd buy it. Like forcing someone to sell something that they don't want to sell is still stealing. Right, you're taking property from them that they do not want to give you, even for cash. Right, that doesn't, you know, it's still stealing. Uh, Rosie, uh, uh, Jose, uh, or Josie, or whatever, call her Josie. Josie and Ted Saunders said that they were insulted and shocked when the strongly worded letter from North North Northamptonshire Council, fucking. Sorry, it's late. Uh, which has never balanced its own books, dropped on their mat last month. It, is, uh, it said their neat mid-terraced house in, in Rushton near Wellingborough was deemed to be an empty property or was derelict and the council could even force them to sell it. I couldn't believe it, said retired carer Jose, uh, Jose76. We moved to Rushton to help provide childcare for my granddaughter and found this nice little place to live. The idea of forcing us to sell it to make room for refugees and asylum seekers seems totally wrong. So basically, remember how I said there's so many people coming in and there's just not enough services for them? That's a great example. There's not enough housing, there's not enough doctors, there's not enough dentists, there's not enough teachers, there's not enough anything. The system is collapsing, and I think that's a fucking great thing. And there's the letter there, which I'm, in fact, I've buggered it. Let's just read it. We are writing a... We are writing as have reason to believe that the above-named premises or land is empty or unused and that you are the owner. We would like to take this opportunity to find out what your intentions are for the premises or site. How about none of your fucking business? How about that? None of your fucking business. Fuck off. Uh, it may be that you already have proposals, but if not, we can give you some advice on options available to you to bring the premises slash site back into use. The government has identified empty privately owned properties as a potential cause of blight within communities and as waste as blah, and as a wasted resource at time of high housing need. It is setting targets for local authorities and is requiring action by them to reduce this problem. Another funny fact, by the way. Now. As someone who is a land chad, that's right, I've got I've got lots of tenants, bro, <laughs> right? Land chad here. Uh, the reason that a lot of properties... Now, see if I've bought a property, I'm moving a tenant in. Like, that's money. That's free money, right? I love sitting there doing absolutely no work and just feeding on the poor, <laughs> right? No, but basically... That's free money. I'm going to put a tenant in there. Now, the reason that buildings sit dilapidated is there are certain requirements that have to be met in order for you basically, you can in order to be allowed, in order to rent a property out, you need to do things like check for damp and rot, and it's not just send a guy in. You need to do it up to the government's code, which obviously sets a very high bar and it's very expensive. You need to do a legionnaires test. You need to check the structure. You need to check the roof. Blah 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 blah. So basically, if you're just moving in, you can just move in. It doesn't matter. Like the thing couldn't have a roof, and you can just move in if you wanted to. However, if it's a tenant, there are so many different things that you need to meet, right? Which means if you buy a property and there's problems with the roof. And then got some guy goes, oh yeah, that's going to be like 25 grand for a new roof. You don't fucking have that lying around. You just bought a new house, so you need some time to actually save up the capital to repair the roof so that you can move a tenant in. Then basically, it's, it turns out to be government regulations. Or if you repair the roof, it has to be done this exact way. Or you want to do this to the property? Well, it has to be done this exact way, which is so much more expensive and people can't afford it. Right? So the property just sits there for ages, getting worse and worse and getting more derelict because the person is trying to come up with the fucking money to actually afford all the things that they need to do to the house so that they can rent it out. And some people just go, well, Ever. fuck it i can't afford this and they just leave the house sitting there so the funny thing is why are properties sitting abandoned government regulations again it's weird how so many things are, can be directly blamed on government regulations right me however i always make sure i have the capital to repair it all my properties are spick and span and wonderful and lovely full tests every box ticked
because the government forces me to do that. Uh, as part of this process, North, North, North Northamptonshire Council is identifying empty properties and sites within the area with the aim of encouraging owners to bring premises back into use or to find alternative options for derelict sites. Again, it makes no sense to just buy a property and leave it sitting there. Right, unless it's like a holiday home or something that you've got up in the north or whatever, then fine. Right, but it makes no sense to buy a property and then go, I am going to just sit there and let that thing go to shit and fall apart. Yeah, I love absolutely annihilating my own investment. I'm going to buy that and let it get fucked up so that the, its value falls. That makes no sense. Right, it, it makes no sense to do that. You, you buy it, you do it up, you get a tenant in. That way you're making money. Instead of just losing money on paying a mortgage for a place that is generating no money and it's actually falling down in value. It makes no sense to do that. But government regulations. Uh, the resettlement team at North Northamptonshire Council supports asylum seekers, unfortunately, and refugees across three different projects, homes for Ukraine, Afghan resettlement, and asylum dispersal. At present, we are seeing a considerable increase in positive immigration decisions being made in favour of asylum seekers, mainly single men. Funny that. Funny how it's such an awful, terrible place that they never bring their women and children with them. That's crazy that, oh, it's so war-torn and they're executing people and you and you left your wife and children behind? You're a scumbag. You're an actual, so you fled a war-torn country and abandoned, I send them money, oh, yeah, that's nice. Can the money block bullets? Can it block AK rounds? I've left my wife and ch children back home in my war-torn, you're a scumbag then. You're an absolute scumbag for abandoning your family in such an awful place. So basically, if, if you're an asylum seeker and you've came here and you've said, yeah, I abandoned my wife and kids, in a third world absolute horrible shithole so that I could come here and live in prosperity. Yeah, you're a piece of shit. Uh, where was I? Uh, once they are granted refugee status, uh, they are given only 28 days to leave their home office provided accommodation and to apply for benefits, find work and, so uh, and source move-on accommodation due to the limited time frame and increased private rents. The council is struggling uh, to source suitable accommodation for this cohort. Why isn't the council building more houses? Just build more. You're in charge. You don't need planning permission. You are the council. Just build more houses. Why aren't you doing that? Why aren't you doing that? Because you've got the money. You definitely have the fucking money. Why aren't you? Why instead are you harassing the people that already live here to give up their homes? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that, big guy? Uh, the ideal long-term solution would be to provide accommodation by using empty properties which would benefit owners and the project. Uh, there are other ways in which we might be able to help advise and work with owners to bring their properties back into use by informal means. However, there are a range of measures available to the council to require owners of empty properties to carry out repairs to prevent them causing a nuisance to neighbouring premises and or to take action bringing them back into use. Uh, so, basically, they're trying to frighten them and they, yeah, we're going to take your property off you and we're going to put migrants in it. And it's like, I know this sounds bad, I am really happy that they did that, <laughs> as fucked up as it sounds. Like, poor old couple, I hope they never, I hope they keep that house forever and I hope the government never touch it. But, basically, it's going to open a lot of people's eyes. That's, that's, that, that's what I mean. It's going to open a lot of people's eyes to just how bad things really are. Uh, the letter-headed empty properties... Oh, fuck, is this just going to... Yeah, this is just going over everything that I've just read in the letter. I'm just going to skip the parts. Uh, it said the council could make a compulsory purchase order on the property. North Northamptonshire Council has never managed to balance its budget since its inception in 2021. The council has said increased pressures from demand-led services have driven up costs. Wow, I wonder why are there so many people now using these services? And why is it so hard to cater to all of them? Is it because the services haven't been funded with enough money from people who've lived here their entire lives and worked and paid taxes into these services? Could it be that a bunch of people are just turning up that have never contributed and they are just getting all of these services for free after doing zero work to actually get any of them? Is that, that, that's why, that is why. Basically, like, shit's collapsing. It is collapsing. Our government, our, all of our public services, the NHS, schools, dentists, all that stuff is all collapsing. We cannot cope with the amount of people coming here. And the government knows this fine well. They know it fine well. But, they're doing it anyway. So, again, why are things so hard? The government. The government is doing it. It's bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. They don't give a fuck about you. 
they don't give a fuck. They do not care. That's why everyone's like, if if all these billionaires would just pay their taxes, we could house all of the home. We have, the government has the money to do that right now, a hundred times over. They have the money to do that right now, a hundred times over, right? And yet they don't. But the solution: if we give the government more, they already have the money. They already have more than enough money, and they're not doing it. Giving them more taxes will not make them do it, right? It won't. But some people are still these billionaires. Tax these billionaires. Oh, who gets who gets the billionaires' taxes? Oh, that's right, the government, which is essentially a trillionaire, to be honest. A trillionaire that does not give a fuck about you. Billionaires don't care about us, neither does the government. Neither does the fucking government. I need I need I need leftists to start learning learning that lesson. The government does not give a shit about you. They do not care. Uh, North North I've just read that. Uh, Addy Josie, uh, this was all more worrying as we'd only moved in last November, so we still hadn't received the deeds for the house. Retired driving instructor Ted, 78, and his wife called the council to ask what was going on. Three days later, they received an apology. <laughs> Three days takes the, takes the council a while to do anything, saying their staff had mistakenly earmarked the house for possible compulsory purchase. But the Saunders were still baffled by the policy itself, and I'm so happy that it's now out there in the public. Uh, what on earth is the council doing forcing people to sell their houses and even an empty house is owned by someone so that asylum, se asylum seekers can live in them asked Josie. The answer to this is to stop them coming in the first place not to force people out of their homes the incident was seized upon by the Reform Party UK whose candidate in Thursday's February 15th Wellingborough by-election Ben Habib heard about the couple Mr Habib who is also the party's co-deputy leader told Mail Online I was horrified to hear the plight of Mr and Mrs Saunders, but my horror could not compare to what they experienced last month. They were served with a letter from North Northamptonshire Council, District Council, seeking to possess their home. The accusation made was that their home was derelict and the council intended to use it to house single young men seeking asylum, known to the rest of us as illegal immigrants. I, c I can confirm their home was most certainly not derelict, it was well appointed and cared for. They were distraught by the threat made by the council, they feared not having having title deeds and being incapable of defending their position, it was not until they visited the council and after much pleading, they managed to get the council to desist. Yeah, that's not abandoned or derelict. That's a quite neat, a nice wee garden. I like those slabs. Is anybody else getting that weird green moss grown on the slabs? I've got it all over mine. Apparently it's something to do with the rain. It's a type of algae or something like that. And it's just making like, it turns all the slabs green. I mean, you can pressure wash it off, but it's just very annoying. Does anybody else have that? I'm just, I'm just curious. I just want to know if there's a way I can treat it to stop that stuff from happening in a way that's safe for dogs, please. Because my dogs go out in the garden, so in a way that's safe for dogs, so nothing toxic. So that, yeah, Cry me a non-toxic thing that kills algae. Yeah, fucking good luck. It is utterly shocking that the council would fire off a letter like that to two elderly people and do so with the aim of buying a two hundred thousand pounds house for asylum seekers. This from a council that has a uh, that is as good as bust and has never filed con consolidated accounts since it was established in twenty twenty one. The local charity for homeless people. Yeah, that's right. Anyone that's like any British people that are homeless. Yeah, fuck you. The council's not buying houses for you. It's buying houses is for the illegal immigrants. Uh, the Daylight Centre spends £650 per head per homeless person per year. Think what that charity could do with £200,000. It would be able to care for over 300 British citizens. There are also veterans charities in the constituency struggling to take care of soldiers who risk life and limb for the country. Instead of the money going to them, the council was prepared to blow it on housing, on housing maybe for migrants after forcing out of their home two elderly British citizens. Disgraceful. And it is, it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgraceful. Uh, the council is run by the Tories for all their chat. The Tory like can we just accept the Tory Tories aren't a right wing party? Now, can we can we just accept that? The, the Tories aren't a right-wing party. Let, let's, let's just accept that. Uh, for all their chat about championing local issues, both the Tories and Labour are asleep about the damage being wrought on Wellingborough by a failed council and a complete failure to police our territorial waters. Heads should roll and the Saunders should be compensated. I, I feel that they should be compensated as well. Uh, the only party capable of preventing the dystopia into which our country is sinking is Reform UK. The Tories and Labour have lost the plot. Jason Smithers, leader of North Northamptonshire, 
Shire Council told Mail Online in a statement, North Northampton Shire Council is working with owners of long-term empty properties to bring their property back into use. Compulsory purchase orders are not utilised to oust current owners from their properties. They are a tool used as a very last resort to bring empty properties, which are a valuable and much-needed housing resource, back into use. Well, how about I just say, no, it's my property, I'll do with it whatever the hell I want, it's mine, I own it. I worked to make the money to buy that property, so shove it up your ass. How about that? But no, apparently that's not enough. The government are just like, well, we'll force you to sell it then. And I guarantee it won't be for market value. It won't be for market value. Uh, the empty property initiative letters were sent out in a bid to assist empty property owners to bring their property back into use. And on the whole, do you want you to help them then? Remove all the regulations. Remove the regulations and make it easier for them to build their property. Stop putting heavy taxes on lumber. Fucking Jesus Christ, the cost of lumber. Right? Stop putting heavy taxes on stuff like that. In other words, why aren't you fixing your property? Because you made it too expensive to fix my property. Remove all of that and the properties will get fixed. Uh, where was I again? I keep going on fucking tangents with these things. Uh, and on the whole, the support from NNC was gratefully received. Since NNC formed in 2021, no properties have been purchased by CPO. I mean, not yet. This is a mechanism of last resort to bring problematic long-term empty properties back into use. Unfortunately, in this case, records held by NNC were outdated and the letter was incorrectly sent to a property which was occupied. For this, I am very sorry for causing any undue stress and worry. Uh, I don't care, it's people's property, but out. Genuinely but out. Hey, have you got an empty house sitting there? Yeah, I do. And it's going to sit there empty. Fuck off and mind your business. Fuck off. It's my property. I'll do with it whatever the hell I want. Right? If you want it to be fixed, if it's derelict and you want it to be fixed, stop making the taxes on, on the materials so high and stop putting in all these stupid regulations that I have to meet. Half of them don't even fucking make sense. You're not allowed to have a shed against your what? Why? That's just the regular. That's genuinely the answer. That's just the regulations. See if you try and debate the council on anything. They say that's just the regulations. That's the the end point of the bureaucracy. Like, see, has anyone ever seen Brazil? Brazil is supposed to be a parody of a uh, bureaucracy, right? Where everyone goes, but 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 those are just the rules. Yeah, but why are they the rules? But but those are just the rules. You can't. And basically, what happens is, like, after decades, people are still obeying an old bureaucratic system, and they have no idea why. They have no idea why any of these rules are still in place. For example, there's one guy who's played by Robert De Niro in the movie. He goes around, he's like a, a air conditioning repair guy, but he does it without filing any of the, like, half a dozen, like, in fact, it's not half a dozen, it's like a few dozen forms that he has to fill out in order to carry out the repairs. So he's deemed as a terrorist <laughs> by the state. He, because he doesn't file paperwork. And never, Brazil is a really weird and absurd movie, but it's, it's very good. It is very absurd. Picture if Monty Python wrote Blade Runner. That, that's the best way to describe Brazil. It's, it's really, really good. But you should watch it. But yeah, basically, uh, my property, my rules, my business, fuck off.